Some part of Midtime remain on edge tonight as Mobile police investigate two seemingly random murder cases just a mile apart. 61 year old Terry Lee Crawford was found dead with a stab wound to his chest in Lyons Park on Spring Hill Avenue early this morning. He was found next to his bicycle. At last check, there has been no arrests in this case. The Lions Park homicide comes less than one week after cyclist Joey O'Brien was gunned down outside the post office on Spring Hill Avenue. His bicycle was stolen, and tonight police are still looking for his gunman. Now, one Mobile resident says there were warning signs that a crime like this was likely to happen. He's coming forward with his own story of a crime he witnessed just one block away. Local 15's Darren Singleton checked out his story and says you might be surprised to what he found. Were there warning signs of the deadly violence we've seen on Lower Spring Hill Avenue over the past several days? An arson fire at an auto body paint shop a couple of weeks ago. Now two homicides all within a mile of each other. Could we have seen this coming? As they say, hindsight is 2020. but one Mobile resident has told me he wasn't surprised by these recent crimes. He's seen his own warning signs. North Pine Street near downtown Mobile. At one end is Bishop State Community College. At the other, Spring Hill Recreation Center. And just one block away, the United States Post Office, where cyclist Joey O'Brien was gunned down last week for his bicycle. Now, one man familiar with North Pine Street says it's become too dangerous to travel. It's very obvious uh, there's definitely illegal activity at that location, whether it's drug deals, prostitution, gambling. People coming and going. He doesn't want his identity revealed, but like many Mobilians, this man goes to work before dawn, and his route occasionally includes North Pine Street. But a few weeks ago, something happened that made him change that routine. Bam, 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 bam. Just several, multiple shots fired. He says he was going by 160 North Pine Street when he noticed a car approaching him. Just kept driving, but it was going real slow, and as soon as it went by me, I could hear the engine accelerate, and I looked in my rearview mirror. I saw a car kind of take a 45 degree angle into a certain house, and I just heard shots, several shots fired. This is that house, that first white house here on Pine Street, where the gentleman who saw the shooting says it took place. We went there to see what we could see today, and what we saw was pretty eye opening. Moments after we set up our camera across the street, we were approached by a man we'd seen earlier riding a bicycle. He wanted to know why we were there. Checking out claims of illegal activity, I responded. Ain't nothing going on. Ain't nothing going on? He returned to the house, and then everybody at the house started leaving. Men and women vacated the house in a hurry, in cars, on foot, on bicycles, most hiding their faces. Within a matter of seconds, 160 North Pine Street was empty. After the death of Joy O'Brien, this man tells me he felt compelled to come forward. He says he has yet to hear back from Mobile Police about what he saw. But a friend in the department has told him to avoid the area. It's simply too dangerous, he was told. It's just a matter of time before something else happens at that residence or somewhere else. Now, we've also told a representative of the Mobile Police Department about what we've seen. It's entirely possible they could have already been taking action in this area. Undercover operations are seldom discussed. But it's safe to say that their efforts are more intense now, now that two cyclists have died and their murders remain unsolved. Darwin Singleton, Local 15 News.